Michael Guglielmo surrendered and spent 17 years in prison. I'm not going to tell you about ciphers or the Apollo, but I can tell you about triumph over adversity and tragedy and pain. And what we do in life echoes in eternity. It's all about our dash. In 1985, I kicked the back door of a drug house in. I ripped up the kitchen with a machine gun. I advanced across the kitchen to a room where there was a drug enforcer. I was there to kill him. I fired my machine gun through the wall. He dove out the window, ran to the neighbors, and called the police. I didn't have a regular job. My job was beating, extorting, and robbing drug dealers, gang members, criminals, bookmakers. That's what I did. I was a bad guy. SWAT team surrounded the house. I fired over 200 rounds at the police while snorting cocaine and drinking scotch. Ran out of bullets, ran out of cocaine. I gave up. Nobody was injured. I was sentenced to prison 22 and a half to 45 years. I was 23 years old. I ended up in maximum security, 23 hours a day, seven days a week, for two years in a cage. When I was there, they did adult basic education testing and determined that I had a 7.4 level of education. I was humiliated, and I was determined to change that. I went on an educational quest. First thing I did was get a GED, then I got a high school diploma, then I got a paralegal degree. Paralegal degree turned me into an idealist. The law turned me into an idealist. And prison saved my life. Had I not gone to prison, I would have ended up killing somebody or being killed. The mind, a cause, it's the most powerful thing on earth. You can't kill it, can't crush it. I went on to cap my education with a, uh, an associate's degree. Then I got a Bachelor of Specialized Studies in Paralegal Sciences, and then a Master of Arts in the Humanities with a specialization in political philosophy. My sentencing judge, George Papagianis, was so impressed with my education in prison that this man came out of retirement unprecedented in New Hampshire jurisprudence. And he came to court on my behalf. And he sat in the same courtroom where he had sentenced me. And he said, I sent this man away for every day that I could. He came out of a house with a machine gun strapped to him, a Budweiser in his hand, which he refused to drop with five SWAT team guys in his face with shotguns. That was my last beer. <laughs> right. He said, I put him away for every day that I could because I was an absolute danger to society, which I was, and I was unredeemable. He then said, I was wrong. I want him released today. Five months later, I am 40 years old. I'm walking down the street in Concord, New Hampshire, and the song, Staying Alive, is playing in my head. <laughs> I'm bopping, all right? The world had passed me by. Cell phones, automatic doors, motion-controlled urinals, Well, nobody would give me a job. So I'm washing dishes for $7 an hour. $7 an hour. You know, six counts of capital attempted murder, possession of a machine gun, numerous counts of assault. I was unmarketable. So what I did was I started working 
as a roofing laborer for another felon. And then I went from roofing to siding three-story apartment buildings because nobody else would do it because they weren't crazy enough to go that high. So I did it. Then I started my own roofing company and my own siding company. Then I met somebody from the past, a girl that I had known from the past. We clicked. We uh, bought an apartment building together. Then the most amazing thing in my life happened. I had Giovanni, my beautiful baby boy. A child will change your life. And he changed my life. But he was very, very sick. And we went from hospital to hospital trying to find out what was wrong with him. Eventually, we ended up in Boston Children's Hospital. And the doctors told me the most horrific thing I had ever heard in my life. Your son will die before his first birthday if he doesn't get a bone marrow transplant. I'm shaking. I'm a tough guy, man. I'm shaking. And I says, what are the odds of finding a match? The doctor said, one in 20,000. I said, no problem. I'll put 20,000 people in a registry. To save Giovanni, I started a bone marrow movement throughout New England. We actually did the first bone marrow drive in the history of Italy. Pope Benedict gave Giovanni an apostolic blessing. The SWAT team leader that gave the green light to kill me <laughs> did a bone marrow drive to save Giovanni. We were lucky. Within six weeks, we were able to find a cord blood match for Giovanni, and he got his transplant when he was nine months old. But I continued with my pledge to the doctors. One day, I get a call from this girl, Katerina Harf. She lost her mother to leukemia when she was 14 years old, and her and her father started Delete Blood Cancer, DKMS, in 1991. They have registered over three million people and facilitated 34,000 bone marrow transplants worldwide. Now, the dying words of her mother, do not let me die for nothing. This woman wanted me to work for her. So that's what I did. I went to work for her. Giovanni's medical condition, however, continued to deteriorate. He almost died five times before his second birthday. He was on 17 medications that were taken throughout the course of the day. His body was riddled with stress fractures from the effects of steroids. He was fed every three hours through a feeding tube. His quality of life was horrific. His GI tract was very bad, but this boy he was a warrior. I mean, he was a gladiator. I believed he was a gladiator. He smiled through everything. He found happiness. He played. He just rolled with it because he was tough. I mean, this boy was Italian, Greek, and Irish. <laughs> <laughs> Had he grown to an adult, we would not know whether he wanted to start a war, get drunk, or cook something. We eventually end up back in Boston Children's Hospital because Giovanni's GI tract is so bad. Now the doctors want to remove his colon. But Giovanni is five years old and 25 pounds. So they need to fatten Giovanni up. They need to put some meat on his bones so he could survive this surgery. And what they did was they put a pick line in him and they sent him home. He wasn't allowed to eat anything. And Greek Easter his mother called me up and she says, Michael, you have to come get Giovanni and take him to the hospital. Something's wrong. And then she starts getting hysterical. She's going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Phone's disconnected. I rush down to Concord Hospital where I find Christina in the emergency room with Giovanni. Giovanni is having these small seizures. His head's rolling back. His eyes are rolling back and then he's coming back. He says, Daddy, I want some yogurt. 
I said, okay, I'll go get you some yogurt. I run to the cafeteria. I get him some yogurt. I come back with the yogurt, and I'm feeding it to him. And he is eating it ravenously like it is his last meal. The doctors want Giovanni sent to Boston Children's Hospital. So his mother says, Giovanni, I'm going to go home and pack a bag, and I'll meet you in Boston. Giovanni says, love you, mommy. She leaves. I get in the ambulance with Giovanni. Giovanni's having more seizures. Then he throws up the yogurt all over his chest. I am devastated. I am just in fear. I'm crying. I'm turning my head away so he doesn't see me. I don't want him to see me weak. Clean him up. He says, Daddy, my belly hurts. I know, baby, I know. We're driving to the hospital. As soon as we hit Boston, this is right out of the movies. Cars are pulling up on the sidewalk, on the grass, everywhere, to get out of the way of this ambulance. We pull into the emergency room. We get inside. This doctor picks up Giovanni off the gurney, and Giovanni's entire body goes, in, goes into the most horrific convulsions that I had ever seen in my life. He's in the doctor's arms, and his whole body is jerking, and his eye and his corner of his mouth were just crimping together, and it was horrific, and I was, I was broken. They intubated him and sent him to ICU. His mother comes in. She sees him intubated in ICU. She's hysterical. Giovanni's stomach is heaving. He's having seizures now in his stomach. He's holding one finger, my finger in his hand, Christina's finger in another hand. Doctors are going, Giovanni, Giovanni. He squeezes our hands. He wiggles the toe on his right foot, and that's it. He was brain dead. His pupils were blown. I said to his mother, we've got to remove him from life support, Christina. We've got to take him off life support. She got into bed with him. We surrounded him with everybody that loved him. They printed his hands, his feet, very ceremonial. And then she starts singing, you are my sunshine. Most painful thing I had ever seen a woman, it was almost like watching a woman being gutted. Doctor says to me, Michael, should we remove the respirator? Yes, remove the respirator. Should we remove the medications? Yes, remove the medications. Would you like us to give him a shot of morphine? Yes, please give him a good shot of morphine. And then he was gone. When I eulogized Giovanni, I told everybody, we are going to bury my son today, and tomorrow we are going to build his legacy. To date, the Delete Blood Cancer New England campaign behind Giovanni has registered over 45,000 people, and 185 people have become donors. Here at UMass, we have registered 4,082 students. 20 students have donated their stem cells. Now please, give me your attention for a minute. Close your eyes. Close your eyes tight. I want you to think about the people that you love, your mother, your father, your brothers, your sisters. I want you to think about the most amazing moments in your life that you share with these people that made you feel alive, that brought warmth to your heart, made you feel like there was no, no better life. Now imagine your mother coming to you and saying, I'm going to die. I have blood cancer. If I don't have a bone marrow transplant, I'm going to die. Imagine your doctor coming to you and saying, your son, your daughter will die. She has blood cancer unless we get a bone marrow transplant. Imagine a child's last words. Did they find a match for me yet? Daddy, mommy. The death of a loved one is the most tragic thing that you will ever experience. But you, all of you, have a chance to spare others the agony of death by registering as bone marrow donors to delete blood cancer. All of you. 
Do it for Giovanni. Do it for Katharina. Do it for the people that you love. Be a hero. Save a life.